executive co-producer of the film. Now I would like to introduce the numerous talents sitting next to me. I'll begin by Akin Aksu, who is the co-scriptwriter of the film and already worked on The Wild Pear Tree of Nuribild Ceylan and who was in the film. Uh, and is back here. Then we have Musab Akisi, uh, who plays the part of Keenan in the film. Uh, he is an actor who has been in a number of uh, films for the cinema and TV. Next to him, Merve Dizdar, an actress who plays the part of Nure. She has received awards, she uh, uh, appears in plays uh, on TV. And next to me, Exe Baxi, who is beginning uh, uh, her career as an actress in this film. And then next to her, Denise Sely Loglu, who is a famous uh, actor who's been in any number of films for the uh, cinema and TV. And then we have Nuri Bill who's back here for the seventh time in competition in Cannes, the first time. I discovered him for a short in uh, 95, and then he's been in all competitions ever since he's presented a film, since 2001, since Uzak, for which he got the a grand prize and uh, an acting prize. And then Climate, which got the prize of the international press, 2008, Three Monkeys, a Best Director Award, 2011, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia, the Grand Prize, 2014, Winter Sleep, Palme d'Or, and the last time we saw him, it was for The Wild Pear Tree in 2018. To get the ball rolling, I would like to ask you, first of all, Nuri, the following question. The film was shot in a very special part of Turkey. I'd like to know where it was shot. And something leads us to believe that uh, the film was shot outside in a special region, but some scenes may have been shot in a studio. How was the film shot? Uh, First of all, this film was shot during the COVID pandemic, and uh, there were some difficulties obviously linked to the epidemic. First of all, I'd like to say the following. Uh, Akin did the screenplay. He had taken notes while he was doing his obligatory service as a teacher. Ibru and I, and we were three of us, uh, and we wrote the final screenplay. We needed to have a fairly remote place, uh, given the circumstances, and we also needed to have a school in a village because the uh, children had to uh, be at school. In Turkey, there are very few secondary schools in villages. We have a new system now, and the secondary schools were all grouped together at a district level. And the students are taken there by bus. In places where there's lots of snow, there are problems of transport, these uh, middle schools or secondary schools uh, still exist and have not been moved to the district. We traveled a lot to choose the location, and this was the only place that we found. The region uh, gets a great deal of snow, and that's why the secondary school uh, still existed there. It's in the province of Azurum, the Karayazu district, uh, which is a place nobody knows about. And uh, we shot the film in a little village in that district. Uh, the outside of the school was shot in a different place, the inside and so on. We did a lot of editing and we brought all the uh, rushes together. Uh, 
Film I have a question ortasını, yani çok uzak başlıyoruz for Nuri Bilge. Ortasındaki sınıftaki öfkelendiği sahneye kadar neredeyse hiç yakından görmüyoruz. Hani bütün karakterlerinizin şu an kadar bir We gradually discover the main character ve, but only really get to know him towards the middle of the film. He's a character who's full of contrasts. I get the impression he's the character who's most different from you. You're talking about Samet? Yes, I am. There's a kind of a political despair that you sense in this film and which was absent in your other films. How did you go about this? And that brings me to another question. What are the differences between these characters? <laughs> there were several alternatives in my mind. I had no clear idea about what the character was going to become in the end. However, I had the impression I'll have to see the film again to get a more definite idea. The actors saw the film for the very first time here in Cannes. I don't know exactly what they think about their respective characters. <laughs> what was the question for me? I've forgotten. I can't hear the speaker. I don't know what you mean by a distance with the character in the film. I don't feel that I'm far removed from the character. Otherwise, I wouldn't have portrayed him in my film. But if there's a feeling that uh, I don't know, I don't include it in my film. All my characters and the feelings of all my characters are feelings that I have experienced myself, uh, within myself, even if they were just little traces of a feeling, not something uh, very strong. And what about the obscure side to the character? It's just the way I like to tell stories, to, do, to portray things. I like these sort of dark, obscure meanders. Sometimes these characters resemble anti-heroes. That's not the impression I have, however. It depends on the vision you may have, personally. I speak about very ordinary feelings, which each and every one of us may feel. Of course, there are mixed feelings. There are very different feelings in portrayed in the film. I found it somewhat difficult to, difficult to understand Samet in the film on occasion. But these are things that happen in life as well, every so often. Sometimes I don't know what I do, what I'm doing, what I really think, what I really want. What do I dream of? Uh, sometimes I don't have a clear idea myself. As I was playing the part in this film, I realized that something different might transpire. But the character, after having portrayed this character, well, I said the following. I had the impression that uh, I went beyond uh, the uh, character of Samet. Uh, In other words, uh, uh, the way this character thinks about himself, uh, his, the various facets to his identity, Samet uh, enabled me to go further than the actual character Samet and to uh, find a new version of myself, of my own identity. <laughs> Esther Heboyan from Euro Eurojournalist in Strasbourg. Uh, perspective is uh, a late motive in your film. And uh, how compatible is perspective with uh, the truth you're trying to get at? Thank you. Can you repeat, please? Okay. Yes. Your film is quite philosophical. And perspective is um, a late motive in your film literally and metaphorically. 
And uh, my question is, uh, how compatible is perspective with the truth you're trying to get at? Perspective, Sydney uh, um, And what do you mean with perspective exactly? I didn't understand. Um, subjective vision of things. Subjective vision of things. Viewpoints. Hmm. Uh, you mean that? Yeah. Uh, buna ne cevap vereceğimi tam bilmiyorum çünkü uh, I don't sanırım really bu dediğiniz know how to answer your question. Sezgisel olarak geçilen aşamalar gibi geliyor bana. Ben it really hinges on what you feel. Çok, Things are subjective when I shoot a film. I'm very analytical. I have a very uh, reasoned approach to things. And I place my trust in what I feel. The same thing when I direct the actors. Sometimes you have the impression that things aren't going right, that there's an imbalance. Then I redo the sequences in question. But it's based on instinct. It's based on what I feel. I have the impression that I didn't really understand the meaning of your question. That's why I'm embroidering a bit. Uh, perspective, uh, well, maybe someone else understood your question better. If so, I'd be very pleased uh, uh, that somebody else answer it. Je pense que vous, vous, vous faites allusion peut-être au fait que le professeur enseigne la perspective the teacher dans le film. C'est sur le tableau. Il y a entre l'enseignement de, de la perspective. So he teaches perspective to his students. Le regard de Nuri Bilge-Celan sur ses personnages ou sur, le, ou sur la condition humaine. The way Nuri Bilge-Celan looks at his characters or looks at life is perhaps based on this idea of perspective. Kerem bir daha tekrar eder misin? Ben takmayı unuttum şey. Evet. Evet, bu da karmaşık. Neyse. <gülüyor> It's a very complex matter. Let's continue. Martin Rozdaski, Bulgarie Art Action. Pourriez-vous élaborer sur le processus de l'écriture de votre scénario? In terms of writing the screenplay, I'm interested in the starting point. Do you start with the characters? or the idea, and how do you work together on the writing? Yeah. This is also uh, a question for Akinaksu, perhaps. I'll start by answering the question, and Akin may want to add to what I have to say. With Akin, we've already shot a film together, uh, the screen, there were three people who wrote the screenplay, uh, me, Abu, and Akin. And Akin went to Eastern Turkey as a teacher, and he spent three years there. He took notes, uh, he kept a diary. He had several diaries, in fact. And he gave me everything he'd written when he got back. I read through his notes and his diary, and I liked it. But I hadn't really thought uh, of making a film about this. I didn't want to do another film with a teacher as the main character. There's some things that I like, but I set all this to one side, and we started to work on different topics. Then, in one way or another, I realized that there were some details I couldn't forget, and I wanted to go back to them. I talked with Abru, and we thought, well, maybe we could try to rework this based on the notes taken by Akin. 
Ebru, Akin, and I therefore got together. I don't remember exactly how much time we, we spent together, but we tried to create a sort of a, a, a platform because what Akin had read was very lengthy. It took about three years, and, and some details uh, really uh, enthralled me. Strangely enough, it's the details that pushed me to make this film, but the details that pushed me to make the film don't actually appear in the film. There's another thing. Other residual things did remain in the film. On the whole, we created sort of a platform, and we communicate by email. We don't see each other in person that much. We write this or that scene, and we each write the scene. Then we, do, we rewrite it twice or three times. After that, I decide on the uh, final editing of the sequence. Sometimes Ibru wins, sometimes Akin wins out uh, in terms of the uh, initial writing of the scene. What I've understood is that each of us has their strong points when it comes to writing, and we all have our own distinctiveness. We all have a different approach, in fact. And it takes a long time, this process. It took more than a year, I think. Ebru, uh, Akin, what do you think? Yes, it took uh, over a year to write the screenplay. Akin, what do you think? Well, I love to keep a diary. I love talking about events that uh, influence me. I've kept a diary for a long time, and I get the impression that I exist uh, through my diaries. Uh, with the various interpretations of happiness, sadness, it's one of my passions. I was sent to work in eastern Turkey, and I took notes regularly. I took a huge amount of notes. I didn't know what to do with them, because there were so many pages, in fact. This region, for me, was a very striking experience, because I come from uh, the southern part of Turkey, and I only knew Anatolia from a sociological stance. I didn't know it truly. It was a, quite a, a, a trial for me to go and work there because the culture was different. I found it difficult to adapt. I love the region, of course. There are huge contrasts there. And so I wrote the script and we worked on it. Um, we let our imagination loose, and we truly worked intensely, the three of us, on the screenplay. I hope you appreciated it. Bonjour, Beatrice Mali, je Radio Clapas à Montpellier. Voilà, moi je voulais vous poser une question. I want to, to say that I love what you do, and I greatly like this film as well, of course. I thought that this film uh, had something very painful about it. In any event, in the first part. I noted something. Most of your characters sigh. I don't know whether it's just by chance or whether you told them to sigh so much. And you sigh when you're in love, you sigh when you're in pain. So I thought this was constant, running through the film. The end finishes with this mountain, and we see the young girl who represents the future, and then you have this very colorful uh, face, and I wonder whether the idea was uh, that uh, finally the light had been found, or is it the contrary, that everything has been burnt to a cinder? It's neither light uh, nor darkness. Things remain indeterminate. You can say it is darkness and not light. It depends on the person. The characters in the film when I start a film, 
I never intend to structure or mold the characters. I let my characters evolve. I respect the multidimensional aspect of all my characters. Perceptions, uh, one always has uh, perceptions, and perceptions may be different. In the film, I have the impression, with the bird that flies away at the end, I have the impression that there's a, a, he has a new perception of the region where he lived, but while the perception is not very clear. When it comes to perspective, things are a bit vague and hazy when it comes to this growth of awareness. Things evolve. Well, I don't really know what this means, but I get the impression he becomes aware of certain things, not uh, uh, very clearly, but to a degree in any event. And indeed, there is definitely a change. But what? change. Events or even a landscape can act as a catalyst in an individual's feelings. Even a landscape can open up new doors, new windows. I'd like to add a further point. This was not the way I expected to finish the film. The film could continue for a very long time. Still, the most difficult sequences in the film were uh, shot after the end you saw. I preferred to end the film in this manner without using uh, the sequels. When we were doing the editing, I had the impression that something had emerged and I wanted to end the film at that point. A small nuance in terms of the face you see at the end. This nuance became very important in my eyes. There's something you can't put your finger on, but it's uh, something different. Not everyone is going to have the same interpretation, of course. And I said to myself, this film has to be brought to an end at this point. It's even difficult for me to explain, but I've done my best. D'autres questions de poser des quelques questions aux comédiens, aux comédiens du film. questions for the actors in the film? À vous, Etche, c'est peut-être un de vos premiers films de cinéma. Et peut-être, pouvez-vous nous raconter comment vous avez justement appréhendé votre, votre personnage et une question que je poserai aux autres comédiens et de quelle façon travaille Nouri avec vous Est-ce que vous avez une question à l'autre acteur aussi Est-ce que vous avez une question à l'autre acteur aussi Est-ce que vous avez une question à l'autre acteur aussi Est-ce que vous avez une question à l'autre acteur aussi Est-ce que vous avez une question à l'autre acteur aussi Est-ce que vous <coughs> yani benim için tabii çok güzel bir deneyimdi başlangıç olarak. Karakteri It was uh, an absolutely uh, wonderful experience of course. The character. How did I approach the character? The character wasn't very detailed in the script. How can I put this? I, I don't know. It was necessary, really, to try and understand the character, to interpret the character, viewing the character from the outside. The character was the same age as me, and we had many things in common. That is, at least the students did. This energy, huge energy. They all, all the students, both boys and girls, had this huge energy. So that was my starting point. But up until the actual shooting of the film, I didn't have a predetermined idea. Then things changed as soon as we started shooting the film. Do we remain faithful to the script? Yes, I think so. Yes. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Est-ce que vous avez eu peut-être plus de 
possibilité euh, d'évoluer par rapport au scénario Que Dieu euh, évolue. Voilà, c'est vraiment la question de savoir comment, euh, comment, comment Nouri dirige ses acteurs. Comment does Nouri uh, direct his actors, in fact Bu soruya yani Nuri Bilge Ceylan'ın çalışmak bir ayrıcalık öncelikle öyle başlamak istiyorum çünkü bizim What's it like working with Nuri Bilge Ceylan? He really empowers you. I saw the film for the first time yesterday. We were like a laboratory when the film was being shot. The feelings, the characters, it was like a, an experimental lab. I felt that I was working in a, a lab, and that was important for me. Nuri Bilge, well, you act a sequence. You come out of yourself. I don't know how I can, how I can put this. It was a study of characters. The director is quite exceptional. It's like a dance. The feelings are all mixed together. When I saw the film for the first time yesterday, there were some lines about despair and hope. There's no more hope left. That's what I felt at a given point in time when it came to the atmosphere of the film. The feelings are very complex. Denise parlait de la découverte presque de son personnage hier en voyant le film. Yesterday, watching the film. For you, Musab, were you really discovering the character Kenan? Did you have the impression that you were discovering the character again, in comparison with the script, perhaps, or your initial idea? Herkese selamlar. Öncelikle. Good morning everybody. First of all. Yeni bir şey mi gördüm? Did I discover new features when I watched the film? Çünkü biz Well, actually, uh, things were not clear in my mind. From a technical stance. I felt muddled. We tried a lot of things, as Merve said, and yesterday we saw the results of a fiction during the screening. You have expectations, and then what you actually see may be different, but that's a very personal stance. I wasn't surprised in the least. For me, and performing well as an actor, well, I started in the theater, I studied uh, acting for the theater, and the cinema came later. But when I was uh, working in the theater, People said, well, you have to be natural. And uh, people said, oh, it's like a character from Nori Bilge Selan's films. After a while, things became more existential. And that obviously has an impact on one's performance. Then I met Nori Bilge. It was like meeting someone I already knew. As uh, Merve said, it was like a dance, uh, something very harmonious when we were doing the film. There are three main characters in the story. And the characters all carry around a sort of a weight. And there's a sense of despair that engulfs the characters. And Samet, uh, of course, uh, plays a very important part in the film. The character had a huge impact on me. Uh, Samet is the one that influenced me most in the film, perhaps. He's the one who's most deeply influenced by the course of events. 
When it comes to the actual acting, my performance, I felt I was in the service of the main character. But what influenced me most was the feeling of existing. Thank you. Hello, I come from Belgium. I'd like to put a question to Mr. Ceylon. In fact, you voluntarily chose an extremely remote place. Uh, it's a desert full of snow. And I thought to myself that perhaps uh, going so far away from a city, one can then dream and indulge in utopias, even if uh, there's a disappointment at the end. So I'd like to have your views on the matter. Second question, the importance of the photos you include in the film which are totally magnificent. And the photos, I wouldn't say, are more beautiful than the film, but they are quite outstanding. I wanted to know what the meaning of uh, uh, these photos is. Why did you put them in the film? And once again, they are magnificent. I'd love to have one myself. Öncelikle şunu söyleyeyim fotoğraflar Ebru'nun ve benim ikimizin fotoğrafları sadece benim değil. Ondan sonra fotoğrafların filme bir zenginlik başlangıcını düşünüyordum. Bir zenginlik getireceğini düşünüyordum. I thought that this would add a, a further dimension to the film, that it would flesh it out, add a certain richness or wealth. And so the character loves photos. Yani tabii çekmekte olduğunu gördüğümüz fotoğrafın benzerlerini arkasına koydum. Yani böyle şeyler... So I added these photos, and the character takes photos, and so I included them in the film. Even uh, in the past, he was uh, supposed to have taken other photos. I watched the film in an objective way for the first time last night. What was your first question, though? I've forgotten. First question? Sur la question de l'éloignement. And choosing such utopies. a remote place. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, tam tam. Uzak. Evet, tabii. Yani karakterin ruh hali için ücra bir yerde olması zorunluydu zaten. For the main character, it was necessary to be somewhere very isolated because happiness can be achieved wherever you are. That's at least what people think. In fact, if you're not happy in life, you always say to yourself you might be happy if you go somewhere else. Even people in Istanbul think that they could be happier elsewhere. It's a, a way of running away from things. They always think that it's the place where they live that's responsible for their being unhappy. And the character says, well, if I'm transferred to Istanbul, things will be fine again. He feels very foreign to the world where he lives, wherever he is, in fact. And so he's uh, going to be provoked on the whole. There are characters who feel foreign to themselves wherever they may be in life. And that is something that you see in almost all of my films. The characters uh, are of a similar age. In many of my films, they are close to nihilism, in fact in their way of thinking. They're looking for things. They're looking for something which will lend value to the world in their eyes, or lend meaning to the world, at least. La dernière question, c'est pour madame. Last question. Malheureusement. Dayalar Formuldan Burcu İstanbul'tum. Filmde en çok merak ettiğim şey, Samet ve Nuray karakterlerinin beraber olduğu sahnede, Samet karakteri bir yerine giriyor. Samet and Nuray in the film. 
Hastaneyi filme kat, filme eklemeyi Aa. nasıl ne açıdan düşündünüz ve anlamını Sen ne? Sam leaves the set. Evet. E, şimdi o sahne What were you trying to do yoktu. in that sequence? E, senaristler bile bilmiyor. Yani öyle bir well, sahne. Well, in the sequence oldu. where yani Sam et uh, uh, uh, uh, the set. Well, it wasn't originally in the screenplay. I just said to uh, uh, uh, DOP, be, be ready. We shot three sequences where Samet suddenly rushes off the scene. But I only selected one of them, the one you saw in the film. I wasn't entirely sure that this would acquire some meaning, whether it would be kept during the editing. This is something that had, in fact, already been done. And it wasn't my intention from the outset. I wanted the film to be very harmonious from beginning to end. I didn't intend to use the sequence in the least, but suddenly, one of the ones that we shot uh, on the set uh, really interested me, and I thought I'll use it. And this came at a crucial time in the film. It's a way of playing with the cinema. You could view it in that light. It's a, a sort of a, a way of playing around with the cinema. Furthermore, a film is a construct when all is said and done. And that reminds you of this fact. The film is a construct. I started to shoot very late uh, uh, inside in the studio. It was with winter sleep where I started uh, shooting some scenes in a studio. And this feeling. Well, when you work for a certain amount, you've been working for a certain amount of time, you, you actually forget you're, you're in a studio. And then when you leave the studio, you go off the set and go outside, you have a very odd feeling, which engulfs you. And I wanted to share that feeling with the spectator, perhaps, in this scene. I don't know. There are several reasons. I wanted there to be a clear break, perhaps. But during the editing, I realized I needed to use this scene. There were a lot of things I weren't certain about, but I was very definite and uh, sure about that scene. When I talked about it to some of my friends, some said, well, maybe it's not a good idea to include this sequence, but I really liked it. Could I answer too? I'll tell you about how I experienced this sequence. I didn't say to this Nuri Bilge, but it was very difficult for me to act that scene. I found it hard to act that sequence. Başıma gelmeyen bir senaryo ile çok vakit geçirdim ben. Beş ay kadar pandemi zamanındaki psikolojiyle beş ay senaryo ile uğraştım. Sonra sette. We had the ee, pandemic, we had the script, and then once we were actually on the set. Hissettim. Bir yerde Samet ve ben ve onun karanlığı bendeki yansımaları. There was Samet, there was myself. And then suddenly our DNA seemed to be just uh, uh, the same. We were one and the same person. And when I watched the sequence, the actor is sort of fighting, struggling with Samet, and suddenly gives up his role. So it uh, gave me very mixed feelings, but at the same time, it reassured me to see the sequence in the film. Thank you very much. That brings the conference to an end. Thank you very much.